So we're going to look today at putting together everything we've learned about EIGRP into a practical lab. So here we have a simple topology that we're going to work through, and we're going to see how to configure EIGRP in this network. I've pre-configured the IP addressing and other basic config to save some time, so we don't need to worry about that. And as we do this, we're also going to configure a route summarization. We'll see EIGRP's metric, its topology table, and so on as we go through this. Now, if you're one of my Patreon supporters, you can download the pre-configured lab, both before we do the work and after for validation, from the website if you would like to. Uh, if you're not a Patreon supporter, that's fine too, of course. You can build this or just follow along uh, as you wish. Okay, so there are two different ways that we can configure EIGRP. There is the traditional way, and there's another one called named mode, which came along later. So we are going to be configuring EIGRP here with named mode. The idea behind this, or where it got its name from, is that we give each EIGRP instance a name. And we're going to call this one lab. In named mode, we will also need to include the address families. So if you're not familiar with that, the address family just means the, the type of addressing we use, such as IPv4, IPv6, and a sub-address family, unicast or multicast. We're going to stick to IPv4 unicast at this time. Now we want to use an AS number, and it doesn't really matter what we pick here. I'm just going to arbitrarily select number 10. And next, we'll configure the router ID. Uh, technically, we don't need to configure the router ID as the router will select its own if we don't. However, I always like to do this. It's deterministic. Uh, it won't change if we add loopback interfaces later or remove certain IP addresses or cause an interface to go inactive. Um, I much prefer to set these manually. I always know what it will be then. Now, just like interfaces, EIGRP instances can be enabled or disabled. We simply enable this with the no shut command, just like an interface. And then finally, for our basic config, we just need to enable EIGRP on each interface. Uh, we can do this by just enabling it on all at once uh, by using our very, very permissive wildcard mask. It might not be something you do a lot in the real world, but it's great. It saves time in the lab. So that's what we'll do here. Okay. Now we'll just go and repeat the same process on our second router so we can bring up an adjacency. It's pretty well going to be all the same configuration, except for the router ID, of course, which needs to be unique. Um, keep in mind, uh, just at this point, that the address family and the AS number will need to match between these neighbors for an adjacency to form. And straight away we get confirmation that these neighbors are up, which is, which is very good. But let's confirm this anyway. Let's run the show IP EIGRP neighbors command. And you'll notice that this shows the IP address of the neighbor over the peering link. Notice it's the IP address, not the router ID. We can also confirm this by using show IP EIGRP interfaces. This has a list of interfaces that EIGRP has been enabled on, as well as the number of peers that are active on each interface. Okay, so we've got a few more to do here. Bear with me, I'll configure the rest of these devices and we'll just speed this up while I do that. Okay, they're all done now. So we can now get to the really good stuff. Let's see everything that EIGRP knows with the show IP EIGRP topology command. Now, if you look at, just pick on one of these entries, we can see that this is a passive route, which we, we know is good. We can see this particular destination has two successes. That means that there are two equal cost paths. Uh, that will mean in EIGRP terminology that there are two successor routes. We can also see the feasibility distance, which is listed right here, as well as this interesting number here in the brackets. Um, to explain this, the first number is the feasible distance, and the second number is the advertised distance. And I've explained how those work in some other videos, which you're welcome to review if you'd like to. Now, so far, we have the same link speeds on all of our interfaces. All links are essentially equal cost. 
Now let's just change this to see the effect. The simplest way, of course, is to put a bandwidth statement on the interface. So the one I'm putting in here, bandwidth 100, means we're telling the router this is only a 100 kilobit interface. Very, very small, but it demonstrates our purposes really well. So if we look now at the EIGRP topology table once again, we can see there's been some subtle changes. Notice that there are still two paths, but now there's only one successor. We can also see that the feasible distance and the advertised distance have changed dramatically on the second link. The second path will now be the feasible successor, and you'll be ready to take over if the first link fails. Okay, while we're looking at EIGRP settings, this is a good time to see the infamous K values that we've talked about before. We do this with the show IP protocols command. Now, this command works for all uh, routing protocols on the router, not just EIGRP. But if we go to the EIGRP section, we can find the metric weight area. And these are the famous or rather infamous K values that we've all heard about. Notice here that they are not all turned on. I explain the reasons behind this um, in one of the other videos, which I'm sure you'll enjoy if you haven't already seen it. Uh, next, let's do some summarization. We can see here that R4, the router R4, is a very good place for us to summarize. And this is because it provides a choke point, if you will, uh, logically dividing the network into two parts. So we will summarize all the loopback interfaces at this point in both directions. Now, please note here that in the classic EIGRP configuration, not the kind we're doing here, we're using named mode here, remember, this was done directly on the interface. In named mode though, we do this in a slightly different way. First, we go into the EIGRP general configuration uh, for this instance, where we call that lab. Then we will go into the IPv4 unicast address family, and this will be in autonomous system 10. These uh, two steps that we have just gone into here is the same as when we originally configured our general EIGRP configuration. We're just adding more into that now. So within this, we then want to configure our G, GI0 slash zero interface with the AF interface command. Now this interface we're configuring is the one that connects to the R3 router. We then want to use the summary address command to configure our summary. And you'll notice that as soon as we do this, we get a message that shows that the neighbor has had to change due to a summary configuration. Of course, we'll want to compete this, uh, not compete this, we'll want to repeat this for the interface GI01, which then connects down to R2. And we can do the same thing to advertise a summary route down to R5 and R6. Notice that we configure the summary to be advertised outbound. That is, when we use the summary address command on the interfaces, uh, we, we do this on the interfaces that sends out the summary. Now we can confirm this. Let's jump back onto router R1, where we'll take a look at the routing table. And here we can see we have the 10.1 network, and it's been summarized down to a slash 24, which is looking really good. We repeat this over an R5, and here we see we have a 10.0 slash 24 summary. So our summarization has worked really well. And that concludes the lab for today. I hope you've enjoyed all this. We've got plenty more interesting videos on this channel, both for your CCNP preparation, as well as anything else related to networking. I encourage you to check that out when you can. I hope to see you in some of those videos. See you later.